This video is aimed at those GoPro users who have grasped the basics with regards to using the camera, the function of each button, and have an overview of how to physically use and handle the unit. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend you take a look at my GoPro beginner's guide in my channel, since this video is an extension, or almost like a part two, to that beginner's video. Welcome to Ifty's Tech Corner, where today we'll be taking a close look at the options and settings menus in the GoPro Hero 3. Most people tend to learn a lot better by actually doing rather than just watching. So if you have your GoPro camera to hand, I recommend switching it on and going through the menus alongside me as I explain each option in turn. Feel free to pause this video and continue at any point as you check out each option for yourself. Also bear in mind I'm using a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition here, so if you have a silver or white edition, you may find the odd option that I cover missing on your camera. That's not a fault with your camera, it's just that sacrifice you made when purchasing your chosen unit. With that said, let's begin. The menu structure is pretty simple overall, as you may have seen from my beginner's guide video, without entering any options menus, we can use a power button to cycle through the four main capture modes, video, camera, burst mode, and time lapse mode. The camera settings options in the menu therefore relate to the four shooting modes, so you have quick and easy access to them. We then have some further in-depth options for capture settings, camera setup, wireless options, and finally formatting options. Remember from my beginner's guide video, the power button cycles through the different options and the shutter button is used to select options. Bearing this in mind, let's get stuck in. As stated, press the power button to cycle through the camera modes until you get to the spanner icon, which indicates this is the menu for camera settings. Remember, the shutter button at the top of the camera is our selecting button, so press this once to select, and we now enter our menu options. This is probably the menu you'll find yourself in most of the time, so it makes sense it's the very first in the overall menu structure. Go ahead and press the shutter button to enter the menu. Here we can set our recording resolution, which is how large of an image you wish to capture. Generally, you'd want to record at 1080p, which is also my go-to resolution in most scenarios. Increase the resolution for a higher recorded image. The main benefit with going for higher resolutions is that you can zoom in or crop the recorded video when editing. However, bear in mind the frame rate options will also vary according to your chosen resolution. Note that the super view options show more of the top and bottom of the image and is only available on the newer Hero 3 Plus range of cameras. Moving on to frame rates, these vary depending on your chosen resolution. Lower your resolution and higher frame rates will be available to you. A higher frame rate means you can create smooth, slow motion video when editing. The next setting is field of view, basically setting how wide you want the recorded image to be. We have three options here, narrow, medium and wide. Bear in mind with the wide setting you'll also get a fisheye type effect, so it's best to use the wide field of view when recording in a large open environment, since the effect it doesn't seem as obvious. Finally we have low light settings, again this is only available with the Hero 3 Plus range of cameras, but this improves image quality in low light conditions by automatically dropping the frame rate as and when required. If we now exit this menu, we can move to our next menu, setting the photo resolution. Obviously, a higher megapixel setting produces a larger and sharper image. Lower megapixels are better for when you have a smaller memory card, since they are smaller in file size. The next camera setting allows us to choose how many images are saved when the shutter button is held in the camera shooting mode. Basically, this will allow us to shoot a series of photos continuously while holding down the shutter button. We can select from single right through to 10 shots per second. I generally leave this on single and use the faster burst mode for several shots to be taken in succession, which takes us on to our next option. Here we can select how many shots to take and how fast to take them in burst mode. Use this for fast moving subjects or sports, someone making a huge jump for example. You'll then have up to 30 shots to play with or choose from and can use all images to create great effects. Whereas with the previous continuous photo mode setting we just looked at where we needed to keep the shutter button pressed to take continuous images, with burst mode you only press the shutter button once and then the camera will take a set number of images immediately. 
The final camera option is for choosing how often you would like an image to be taken in time-lapse mode. If I was to set this at 0.5 seconds for example, the camera would take an image every half a second and keep saving them until you stop the camera, the battery runs out or until the card is full. You can then use these images to create fantastic time-lapse effects. That's the shooting mode options covered. We can now enter the deeper options to really customise how you use the camera. We start with capture settings. The first setting here is to choose your camera rotation. There may be instances where you wish to mount your camera upside down for example, so if you choose that in the settings here, the camera knows it's upside down and the resulting recorded video will automatically be the right way up when you later view it back. We can then move on to spot meter settings. You can turn this setting on when filming in a darker space by pointing the camera towards a brighter light, such as filming outside from within a dark car for example. Having this setting on will produce a much better image in the lit portion of the frame. This simultaneous video and photo mode allows you to capture both video and photos at the same time. You can set the camera to take a photo every 5, 10, 30 or 60 seconds while a video is being recorded simultaneously. Bear in mind this only works at a limited number of resolution options, so if you turn this setting on make sure you double check the resolution settings as well to ensure you're still on a resolution setting that you need. The looping video mode will continue to record video that overwrites itself until you manually press the shutter button again to stop the video. You can choose how large you want each clip to be and when the memory card is full the camera will simply overwrite the oldest clip, hence recording in a loop until you tell it to stop or until your battery dies. Next we have the fantastic Protune mode, the mode that makes this camera so revolutionary. This mode is not for new users as it will record in a completely raw format which is optimised for professional productions. The recorded video is much sharper and of a higher quality overall, however it will need much more work when editing your video to set the right colour balance and so on. Also note, with Protune switched on you will have the options to select your white balance settings as well as camera raw. We can then exit the capture settings menu and move on to the camera setup menu. This group of settings allows you to customise the camera overall. Our first option here is to set the default setting when powering the camera on. In other words, when you switch your camera on, you can have it jump straight to a certain shooting mode so it's ready for you for instant shooting. The four options available are video, camera, burst mode or time lapse. Moving on, with one button mode selected, the camera will automatically begin recording when it's powered on, so the user doesn't need to power on and then press the shutter button, as soon as the camera is switched on it will start recording straight away. Next we can select your recording format according to your region, either NTSC for the US or PAL for Europe. The next setting refers to the on-screen display, use this display or hide the recording icons and file information on video mode, or the viewing screen during playback. When recording the red camera LEDs on the top, bottom, front and back of the unit blink to indicate the camera is recording. We can use this setting to switch them all off completely so we have no LEDs flashing at all or have only two LEDs flashing instead. Not a hugely interesting setting but a useful one nonetheless. The sound settings rather obviously set the volume of the beeps when pressing buttons. We can have them at 100%, 70% or switch them off completely. Moving on, the manual power off settings can be used to automatically power off the camera when it's inactive, so when no video is being recorded or no images captured and no buttons pressed. A simple setting to help maintain battery life by switching off when not in use. Finally, we have the date and time settings before coming to the camera setup exit screen. Press the shutter button to exit this menu and we'll move on to the wireless settings. The built-in Wi-Fi in your camera allows you to connect to either the GoPro remote or the GoPro app via a smartphone or tablet. You cannot connect to both the remote and the app at the same time and this menu lets you select which your camera will connect to. The Wi-Fi RC option enables the Wi-Fi on the camera to connect to a GoPro remote, whereas the GoPro app option will turn the camera into a wireless hotspot for your tablet or smartphone to connect to in order to use the GoPro app. We've looked at how to connect to either the remote or the app in other videos which you'll find in my channel or in the links below in the video description, so I won't cover them here but bear in mind that this menu allows you to choose whether to switch Wi-Fi on and off and which Wi-Fi setting to enable. The very last camera option we have is formatting. 
This setting allows you to format your memory card. Bear in mind this will delete anything that's currently stored on the card, but it's a good idea to format your memory card before you start shooting video in order to minimize any memory card related errors. As a general rule, when you insert a new card for the first time, or once you've transferred the video from your card into your computer, insert the card back into your camera and reformat the card before you start shooting again. It's more reliable formatting in the camera itself rather than formatting via your computer. So in our two part series, we've looked at how to use a new GoPro camera covering all of its external features as well as shooting modes. In this video, we've taken this a step further and covered the camera options in some depth. You should now be ready to get the camera set up for your shooting needs and get right into the action. I'll leave a link in the description box below for those of you who wish to print this menu structure page out and keep it alongside your GoPro for easy cross-referencing. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Alternatively, feel free to check out the other GoPro videos in my channel by clicking above or in the description box below. Remember to subscribe as there are plenty more GoPro videos and tutorials coming shortly. See you next time in Ifty's Tech Corner.